Hey, I'm Ruben Roman. A lot of you guys may know me as a recording artist, El Demonio, and I'm the creator and the host of Psycho Tribe Chronicles. Just wanted to take a quick minute to let you know what to expect on the show. Uh, the show's about the culture, the brotherhood, and the freedom, and all the stories that go along with it. You know, with my music career in the rearview mirror, I wanted to be, uh, I wanted my next project to be something that I love, and uh, there's nothing I love more than being in the wind. Uh, you know, when you're hanging with your buddies, uh, you know, sipping on some drinks, shooting the shit, talking about the last ride. Well, that's what the show's about. You know, that, that's what it is. Um, you know, no judgment, no bullshit, no drama. Because if, if you're on two wheels, you get it. And because you get it, we're hoping you're willing to share it. Uh, I want to thank you in advance for watching. And I uh, hope you enjoy the show. Salud. not really a morning person well that's me the human the other two are my boys Teddy and Charlie who am I I'm Ruben Roman uh, most of you might know me as a recording artist El Demonio I was lucky enough to have some success in the music business I got to work with some of the biggest names in the industry tours radio and TV appearances endorsement deals I pretty much done it all but truth be told I overstayed my welcome the music industry will definitely let you know uh, when they're done with you But like most artists I didn't listen I went from airplanes Tour buses and limousines Performing in arenas in support of some of the most popular artists On the face of the planet Staying in 5 star hotels To rent a cars Performing in school gymnasiums with well um, Let's just say not so famous of acts Staying in motel 6's um, Do I have any regrets? Nah I had a decent 20 year run my music career can be explained with a simple sports analogy. I swung for the fences and basically walked away with a double. Am I mad at that? Hell, nah, I can't be mad at that. Most people don't even get on base. So what's next? Well, I left the rat race of the entertainment mecca of California to a tiny little country town in Colorado, right next to an Indian reservation. Hell, I didn't even know Indians still existed. I thought John Wayne killed them all. Uh, my life now is straight out of episode of Green Acres. Too young to know the reference? Google that shit. My wife, she's my best friend, and uh, she's my rock. She also refuses to be on the camera. She gave me some, uh, some simple advice, pretty solid. Whatever I choose to do next, make sure it's something I love. Regardless of the outcome, at least I got to do something I love. And outside of my faith, my wife, my family, and my friends, there's nothing I love more than being in the wind. The premise? Hmm. How about every biker has a story? And I'll try to share as many of those stories as possible. So there it is, man. The journey begins. But it's not about the destination. It's about the glory of the ride. Did you have time to think about uh, my show idea? Like I said, I really want you to be involved, brother. I think it's a badass idea, actually, man. I like that premise. Uh, so, what is it? Your... What, what, like I'm thinking is, uh, is uh, it'll just be raw and real, man. Like, you know, a couple of dudes with cameras. Uh, and uh, you know when we sit around bullshit just telling stories? Like, yeah. you know, we'll get uh, the fans of all their stories because your stories are getting fucking old. Oh. <laughs> but uh, like I said, oh, I think wow. we'll do that, but then we'll throw a little bit of reality in it so it humanizes it, man. I think, like interviews and stuff. You know, just anything, just any reason to be around motorcycles and ride some more, bro. Yeah, so, sounds good, man. And then we just 
we'll keep the rights of it, right? Oh, yeah. Like, I know you were a big part of that. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, yeah, we'll, we'll keep it nice and simple. We'll own it. Like I said, maybe, um, you know, we'll, we'll get a uh, stream it on some of these streamer things. Definitely get a YouTube channel. You know, just keep it simple, man. See and see what happens. Yeah, I like that, man. So, uh, I think it's an awesome idea. What, um, just gonna be me and you, or you got some ideas well, you know for some what? other people? Well, or? I, I, I really want Lauren involved, man. Yeah, I like Lauren. Yeah. So, Lo Lauren's cool people, man, and I think this would be really good for him. Uh, yeah, like I said, I, I love the dude. So I think Lauren would be a great idea. Lauren Gibbons. <laughs> man, that's my buddy right there. He's good people. Uh, I gotta say, man, he's my brother from another mother. Um, that is my hillbilly buddy. I swear to God, whenever that dude comes around, you can almost hear the theme song of Deliverance. You know, that uh, mountain man squeal like a pig. <laughs> but uh, why well, do I don't want to be part of the show? Basically because it's just an excuse to hang out with my buddy, you know? Like I said, he's fun to be around. He's funny as hell and he has a huge heart. Um, unfortunately, uh, he was in a really, really nasty accident that left him uh, partially disabled. He has no mobility in his right hand or his arm, so he can't, basically he can't throttle a motorcycle. And uh, that sucks because he can't do something he loves. You know what I mean? But um, I want to be part of the show this week. We could get him uh, head first back in the deep end of the motorcycle culture. And uh, recently I met up with a bike builder, uh, a brother of mine, uh, James Cole from Durango, Colorado, uh, Cole's Chop Shop, and he figured a way to get around the problem. So, uh, so Lauren will be back in the saddle real soon. But like I said, uh, I like the team, man, and you guys are gonna love Lauren, man. He's good people. So we're at Graceful Eye Tattooing, and we're here with Rock Barilla, and uh, the second co-host, Lauren. Why we're shooting at Tattoo Shop, I think it's to make this guy look cooler. So where'd you come with the idea for this latest tat, Lauren? Oh, um, first, what is it, and where'd you come with the idea? This is a, it's gonna be a full sleeve when it's done, and it's an armor, a suit of armor. Um, you better get start. The, the top side is gonna be all armor plating, and the bottom side is gonna be a knight's jousting scene. Mm -hmm. And it came about um, from, not only from some of my family's heritage that I found, um, but I also, um, being in the in the um, the armory business, building shields and, and stuff like that, um, it's kind of where it came about. So you're looking forward to getting back in the saddle? I am looking forward to getting back in the saddle. Nice. As soon as I can figure out what what style of bike that I, I want to, to get and um, get it altered for my handicapness and get back on the street. Nice. You know, I know a lot of tattoo artists and uh, they all have like that one horror story. What's yours, bro? My one horror story? Yeah. Uh... I don't know that it's so much of a horror story. Like, do you ever have to like, tattoo a penis or any crazy shit like that? Or oh, I did tattoo a big old fat veiny penis. <laughs> Nasty. Yeah, was, was, well, the guy was just kept bugging me. He's like, dude, I want to tattoo. I want to tattoo. I ain't got no money. And the sister's like, yeah, let's do something on him. So. She's like, whatever you want. So I did a big old fat penis in his armpit. <laughs> this was years ago. I wouldn't do that to nobody now. But... No, I meant tattooing on a penis. Okay. <laughs> Not on a penis. But, you know, whatever. Money's money. What's my money? Yeah. Yeah. It's it started. There, there it is. <laughs> That's cool, man. What, uh, so... Any ideas on anyone else that might be able to contribute? You know? Yeah, man. I'm thinking, uh, shoot, uh, this dude's like a brother to me. I, talk, I know I talk to him about a lot. Uh, Danny, Danny Salazar. I think Sal I know who you're talking yeah, about. Danny yeah, Danny Salazar. You know, uh, I've heard uh, some I know, stories. Yeah, I know he's all the way in California and we're doing this in Colorado, but I think, dude, I think he'd be great, man. And, uh, Man, dude, like I said, this guy's like a brother to me. And I think it'd be cool because, you know, you know, I told you about it, he had a stroke and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I think it'd be cool to kind of document his, his comeback a little bit. That'd be kind of awesome. And, I mean, they don't come more real than that, dude. Like, like again, again, this dude, if that dude ain't a biker, then no one's a biker. <laughs> yeah, my buddy Danny Salazar. Man, I feel like I've known that dude forever. Uh... 
all the way back to my uh, knucklehead days. And when I mean knucklehead, I don't mean the type of bike I rode. Uh, let's just say uh, I didn't make the best decisions back in the day. But still, man, Danny was there and he was my brother. You know, uh, not too long ago, uh, Danny had a stroke. Um, pretty bad one, man. We almost lost him. But, um, you know, he's on his way back. He, he's doing a lot better. I mean, there's still some work to be done. But, uh, but yeah, man, I just wanted him on the show again because, man, that's my brother. And you won't meet him a real dude. I'm telling you, man, he's the real deal. Uh, let me tell you this. This guy could barely ride a bicycle, but yet he took a, he tapped into his savings and, uh, and bought a motorcycle. And, uh, and I asked him why, and he would basically said, just own it, it makes him feel free. I mean, the guy cannot not own a motorcycle. And, uh, I mean, that's a biker, man. If that ain't a biker, I don't know what it is. You want to know how serious this is? Is, uh... His family don't even know he got it. He got it in his neighbor's garage because he don't want to give them any stress or, or, uh, or get any grief from them for, uh, for having a motorcycle in his condition. <laughs> Tell me that ain't a biker, people. That dude loves. That dude loves to ride. But uh, so like I said, man, uh, I've known Danny for a lot of years, and we're going to have a lot of fun, man. And uh, just remember, man, every biker has a story, and Danny's story is a great one. Check it out. Hey, how's it going? I'm uh, Daniel Salazar. You probably heard already. I'm on the way to recovery. I'll get there. What keeps me going? My faith, my motivation, and my drive to ride again. Every biker has a story. And uh, I look forward to sharing mine and sharing yours. God bless. All right, man, anything else? Yeah, man, I'm thinking, like I said, we'll just keep it simple. We'll do, uh, you know, a little bit of reality, uh, a little bit of some interview stuff, you know, documenting uh, the culture and, uh, and uh, you know, just, just getting to know people on film, basically. You know, just basically keeping it simple. That's, that's what I want the show to be. I just want it to be real, raw, honest, and kick-ass. Right on, man, I like it. Let's get it started. Let's do it. Yeah. So how did I get started in music? You know, uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s, I was actually in a rock band, and we're doing the whole Hollywood scene. And uh, we got asked to go in the studio to make a demo for a major label. And while we were there, uh, in between uh, one of the breaks, uh, our drummer started playing a funky beat, and just out of a joke, I started rapping. And I didn't know that the engineer was running tape. And after our, our studio time was over, uh, a big time artist developer, and a manager came in after us, and the engineer played him the tape, and he liked what he heard. Uh, you know, he got my contact, and he gave me a call, and it's kind of funny, because uh, I was on the phone for like 15, 20 minutes before I realized he wasn't talking about my band. Uh, he asked me, uh, so what do you go by? And I was thinking, uh, Ruben? He was like, no, what's your rap name? And I was thinking, I'm a rapper, man. And he started explaining to me how like there's only two Latinos in the game, and if I sucked, I'd be third best. He told me that uh, that he could guarantee me a record deal, and that uh, that if I signed with him, he'd give me a whole bunch of money. Yeah, after I hung up the phone with him, I called my band and I told him, you know what? I'm a rapper now, guys. You know, it's been like uh, 20 years later, seven albums and the same amount of tours, and and here I am, man. So how did I get into motorcycles? You know, I must have been about eight years old, and I got to love the bike from my uncle Richard. He was a Vietnam vet. When he came back, he wasn't quite right. You know, back then they didn't know about PTSD, so he battled his demons, man. Uh, but he was a good guy. Uh, the family considered him a black sheep, but I didn't know about that. To him, he was just Marco Richard, the guy with the cool ass black pan head. Um, I remember one time he picked me up, and we were going out to, uh, to get something to eat, and we turned down the wrong street, and uh, it was a cul-de-sac. And uh, all of a sudden, everything got in slow motion. Out of the corner of my eye, I see the meanest, baddest uh, Doberman Pinscher running out as a full sprint. Marco Richard didn't know until it was too late. It was on the gas tank, trying to rip his ball sack off. I remember him socking it, and then all of a sudden, everything faded to black. 
When I came to, uh, we hit a green station, like one of them old school steel ones, and I swear to God, I was all covered in blood. And uh, my Uncle Richard was worried about what to tell my mom, so he told me that, uh, just don't tell her, I'm like, she's gonna kind of notice all the blood. And uh, <laughs> he told me that, we'll just say a dog bit you. And I'm thinking, a dog bit me, it looks like a damn a pack of wolf attacked me, man. But uh, ever since then, man, I love bikes. And every time I'm riding, man, uh, that freedom that you get, you know, uh, just being in the wind. You know, Harley has this uh, saying that if I have to explain, you won't understand it. That's true, man. And, uh, but just that, that little motorcycles, even though Michael Richard did that for 30 years, uh, I always had that because he gave me that. He gave me that love. And uh, I'll never forget him, man. Like I said, every time, every time I'm riding, whether it's just for a couple of seconds, you know, in the back of my mind, I just thank him for giving, him, for giving me this. So what's next? This, Cycle Track Chronicles. I put together an eclectic crew of my best friends. <laughs> uh, Josh Combs, award-winning uh, TV guy, me an extra rapper, uh, I got a metal fabricator, and even an evangelist. And the premise of the show is every biker has a story, and we're going to do our best to tell them all. So remember, if you get a chance, check out Cycle Truck Chronicles. Salute. <laughs> it's with great pleasure that I introduce this next guy. Uh, he's my best friend, brother from another mother, co-host of Cycle Tribe Chronicles, uh, Josh Combs. To his credit, he's a two-time Emmy winner for his work with KLTV, which is an NBC affiliate. Uh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> ABC, with that, and all these numbers, we'll leave that. <laughs> and uh, kick-ass bass player, but most importantly, he rides like a beast. Uh, this is Josh. So Josh, uh, how did you get involved with TV, brother? Ah, television. Uh, well, I used to play in a band, um, um, kind of like, it was like a rap rock band and uh, back in the 90s. And uh, that band broke up and I had a daughter, man. And my daughter was like, okay, I had to take care of her. So what do I got to do now? So it's like, maybe I'll, you know, I had a buddy who was going to school for video production. So I was like, oh, you know what? That sounds cool. So I uh, went ahead and I uh, went to enroll at that school. And then um, shortly after, and it really was because of my daughter, a lot of it, you know, just to get my shit together, you know, because I was like, oh man, I was just bad for a long time. Uh, so I ended up moving to Missouri and got my job at my first TV station, thanks to my buddy, man. And he, uh, he basically uh, got me, hell, you know, that TV and that, it just got me straight, you know, going, going the right way, going down the right path. You know, you always think you got two paths you can go on. When you get to a certain point in life, you can either follow that one or that one. And I went to the one I believe was the right one, you know, so. Yeah. So you didn't take that one path that took the other take the kid. Right, That was it, yeah. man. <laughs> two Emmys, and two Emmys later, here we are. Yeah, I got those Emmys in Texas, man. That was my second TV station. So yeah, I went to Texas in uh, 2008, 2009, man, um, directing a morning show there. All right, so, uh, dude, how did you get involved in bikes, man? Where did that love of bikes come from? Oh, man, that's a oh, crazy story. You know, I was living in, I, I, was, I was born in Minnesota, man. I moved out west when I was a teenager, like 13. And I lived in uh, Nevada, and I lived in a little town called Pahrump, Nevada. Crazy little town, um, right outside of Vegas. And uh, we were, I, I had a neighbor, and he used to ride his dirt bike everywhere. And then, uh, you know, he had an enduro, and he was about the same age. We were like 14, 15 years old. And I'd been on the back of that, man, just riding bitch, which was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> but, you know, I get on that bike, man, and we go riding and, and fast, you know, through the dirt. And I, I ended up getting a little 50cc sax, like, uh, and I never got that thing running, man. My dad was like, yeah, go ahead and buy it. You know, he knew I wasn't going to get it running. <laughs> so, like, I just sat there and worked on that one summer, all summer long. Never got it riding, running, man. But, you know, I still love riding on bikes. And um, when I was about, I will say uh, 19 years old, and I had no license, no driver's license, no vehicle. And my grandparents were like, what do you want? And I, I saw a motorcycle, man. I saw a Suzuki GS450. And it had like these tribal painting on it, it had Indian feathers, like everything, like just cool as hell, man. And I was like, you know what? I like that. And they said, all right, we'll help you. And they they put, they bought me a motorcycle, man. 
and that was my first vehicle and I didn't have a driver's license. That was back when you could get a motorcycle separately. Uh -huh. So I had a motorcycle license, no car driving license, and I rode that thing for like three years. And by the way, this was in Phoenix. Uh -huh. So I was living in Phoenix and you can do that. You can ride all year long there. So yeah, man, that was my first uh, ride. And that was like, I'm 43 now. Yeah, I don't look it, I know. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I was 19, man. That was when I first got my bike, man. And since then, I've had many different bikes. So what are you right now? I'm on a Harley 2002 uh, Dyna Wide Glide. Nice. That's what I'm riding nice. right now. So yeah. well, let me ask you, man. In a rock band, <laughs> kids, uh, two Emmys. Uh, what's next, brother? What's next? Oh, man. Oh, I'm just living life, man. I'm loving it. Living life, loving it, riding bikes, riding with you, man. <laughs> we're going to be all over the place, hopefully. So yeah. we're going to be we're gonna be maybe doing a lot of these. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this is uh, Cycle Tribe Chronicles. Introducing my co-host, Josh Combs. Remember to catch those episodes. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Salute. All right, so uh, this is my bike, the 2003-1200 Custom. Uh, I got it at the shop that we're at Cole's Chop Chop in, at Durango, Colorado. I'm getting a tons of cosmetic stuff done to it. I want to do a walk around. Uh, the reason this is uh, not on is because I'm getting braided cables, and those ain't on yet, but you see the other side, what it's gonna look like. Yep. And then I got uh, the hot rod uh, exhaust shoots down. I got all the... Uh, Swing on all that combed out. Uh, back at the lay down flat. I'm getting a smoke lens. I got the white walls. Like I said, man, I'm itching to ride, man. I'm really itching to ride, but it'll be done shortly. We'll be set. So, what do you think? <laughs> 